some ways, it's through simple things like personal hygiene and better health. The Bible, of course, speaks regularly about the importance of our health, physical, spiritual, and emotional. And local optometrist Dr. Daryl Groman agrees that physical health is a key to an overall healthy quality of life. Dr. Groman, back to talk more with important keys to proper visual health with Nancy. Well, hello everyone, and uh, we recently spoke with Dr. Daryl Groman, who is an optometrist in the village of Pandora, and we have him back because there's so much more that we want to talk about. And uh, specifically, um, Dr. Groman, we'd like to ask you about your your mission trips and your work with children, because as you had talked about um, in our prior interview, there is so much that goes undetected. Um, whether it is ignored or just unknown about a child's eyes and how he can he or she performs in school or on the soccer field, you know, in life in general. Vision is a key process to, to gain the most information in the least amount of time. Mm -hmm. If we try to figure out what's all here in this studio with one sense at a time, uh, if you try to taste everything, smell everything, hear everything, touch everything, you gain the most information in the least amount of time um, by using your vision and, and seeing. Right. Uh, but because we have two eyes, the two eyes are not necessarily working together in tandem. And uh, what I've seen around the world and in prison and in Pandora is that when people do see better, they perform a lot better and, and are much more pleasant and productive. I sir, it seems like it makes so much sense and why we don't pay more attention as educators or you know parents, I don't know. But um, even as you said, how you sit at a table or at a school desk might impact it. And I want to know how our, ch our children's eyes are affected by computer screens, video games. Are you seeing any effect? Of course, the, the classroom is not really conducive to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that you're probably too young to remember and recall that school desks were formally oh, sure. made with a slant. Yep. That slant was there for a purpose. And if I would hand you a card to hold, you would hold it at about 30 degrees. Yes. Nobody holds it at zero. And That's if you would go into our classrooms today from preschool through college, you'll find everybody doing their work on a flat desk. True. And most school textbooks have glossy... Uh, magazine uh, uh, quality that's very reflective True. from overhead lighting and when it's on a flat desk and the individual can't necessarily raise the desk they lean forward and they crunch up their stomach and it's a lot harder to breathe if they're working on a slant and I prescribe a slant board all the time that, that I prescribe the best desk for the classroom to use in the classroom and to use at home when they're doing their homework if they sit up straighter and taller, more like the Eiffel Tower than the Leaning Tower of Pisa, if that student is a two-eyed person, if they're leaning like this, or leaning like this, or leaning like this, <laughs> yes. it's not easy to, to yes. do their schoolwork. And so they get frustrated and angry, and, and, and uh, parents have an idea that they're quite rebellious. But uh, there's no instruction except by choir directors and, and band directors to have the students sit up straighter and taller. When you sit up straighter and taller, you open up the breathing cage, you get more oxygen in the brain, you think better. Okay, I'm and you sitting have up taller now. And you have much better handwriting when you're working on a slant. That's very true. And then if you have the best lenses at near, and it's not unusual for kids, people younger than 40 years old, uh, to be wearing bifocal contact lenses or bifocal in glasses, if they see better, mm -hmm. they're going to be much more productive and pleasant. Absolutely. I work with the Area Agency on Aging as well, and fall risks are um, receiving a lot of attention now, and a lot of it is because um, older adults don't take care of their eyes either as, right. as well. And so, you know, that opens up a whole other can of worms when it comes to um, you know health risks involved so it's just it is really something that I think a majority of us probably take for granted every day until we have a problem but a lot of times uh, and with all due respects vision and visual skills are not thought about 
And so it's not unusual, and I'm thinking specifically of a mother who was in anguish and tears saying that her daughter's first grade teacher didn't know what to do with her. Right. And I said, Mom, thanks for bringing her in, because when, when I can help your daughter to see better, to sit up straighter and taller, she's going to be a lot more productive and much more pleasant. Definitely. Well, let's talk about then, um, we don't have a lot of time, but your mission trips, because I, I often think about that as well, these, these people that have no access to, to vision care wouldn't even know where to begin to find help. Um, glasses are not available around the world, and earlier you said that you're wearing contact lenses, that you're legally blind. Uh, actually, you're functionally blind when you don't have contacts or glasses. Okay. You're only legally blind if you wear your best glasses or contact lenses and then have difficulty seeing the large E on the chart. I gotcha. Okay. And so the, the main cause of blindness around the world and functional blindness around the world is not due to eye disease, cataracts, glaucoma, retinal problems, retinal detachments, but actually not having access to the best lenses to help them to see the best. So right. over half of those kids that are in blind schools around the world would not be in the blind schools around the world if they had the best glasses. They would no longer be functionally blind. They would they would have good vision if they had the best lenses to see. And, and having an opportunity in Africa and Tanzania, uh, the barber uh, stopped cutting hair because he couldn't uh, see to cut hair anymore. Right. And I helped him with the best lenses for near, and he could see his um, wrinkles and his um, <laughs> fingerprints, and he knew he could go back to work. And uh, I had a, an uncle who's since passed away that was a barber in Lima for uh, 38 years or so, and, and I think about him from time to time, and this fellow in Tanzania, Africa, that he could go back to work and yes. make money for himself and his family. It's his livelihood, absolutely. Well, Dr. Daryl Groman, thank you very much for being with us, um, and congratulations again. You are among the top 100 notable alumni at the Ohio State University College of Optometry, and we want to thank you for your work locally as well as overseas, so thanks so much. For all Thank you, you very much. All right. Don't forget this and all the other stories you see on Faith and Friends can be found online at WTLW.com. Just click on Faith and Friends and you'll find the individual videos, a lot of valuable information from Dr. Groman. Before we go, 